Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, this week I'm going to be letting Yasrim do another video for you because it's been a while and he's eager to show you how to paint some other vehicles. Now last week I did some 15 millimeter Germans. So this week Jasper is going to be doing a 15 millimeter vehicle for you. So sort of showing you what the technique is like when you're painting armor at that sort of smaller scale. The model he's picked out for you is this. See, it's in two parts here. I mounted on dowels, as you can see, and that's just to make it easier to paint. So the turret will be attached later on. But this model is a very late war um, Panzer IV J. Um, you can see it's got sort of shoots in on the sides here, and it's got, you know, a uh, here's the turret. And Jasper's already used an airbrush to apply a base coat in black to it. Now this model here is by uh, Forged in Battle and it's a combination of both resin and metal parts. They make really nice models <coughs> and maybe they don't get as much attention as say well Battlefront obviously but also say Plastic Soldier Company which are pretty famous for their very cheap plastic only models which are an affordable way to build up your 15 millimeter army. Now, uh, Jasper will be actually working on two of these models. He's actually prepped two Panzer IV Js, so he's going to be kind of alternating in between them. You may see both or only one, sort of a combination of them. And, you know, I'm not quite sure, but there's going to be sort of both kind of appearing in the video. And that's because he may be showing slightly different techniques on the two different tanks. Um, they are going to involve a fair amount of airbrush work just because airbrushing, if you can do it even on this scale, still really gives a nicer effect. And that's not to say you can't do a tank without an airbrush. You can do this scale in particular quite well without one, but you know, Jasper is eager to show just what you can achieve if you do have an airbrush. Uh, and you know we want to try it out. He will be applying a camouflage pattern to these tanks. Um, it'll be a very late war pattern, of course, to fit with the fact that they're very late war tanks. So this tutorial should be really great for everybody who's been asking for German armor and how to paint German vehicle camouflage patterns. And I know there are a lot of you who are really into that. So uh, I imagine this view video will be uh, very popular. So. I think that's all I need to say for now, so I'll just let him get started. Jasper's going to start out here by base coating the tanks, and he is using Vallejo Air Surface Primer in German Dark Yellow, and he's just going to apply that all over the um, tank or tanks, depending on how you want to look at it. What's very important, though, is that your model should be thoroughly degreased before you apply that initial black primer, and that then the black primer has a lot of time to really thoroughly dry. Um, depending on what you're going to do, that's not always so important, but because of how we're going to be applying the camouflage to this tank in a little while, having a really hard, solid base coat is absolutely critical or you're going to run into some problems. Now we're going to try to achieve sort of a li gradually lightening gradient effect on the tank. The paint that's being used here is a mix of Vallejo Air Middle Stone and sort of increasing amounts of Vallejo Air White. So the first layer is going to have a larger percentage of Middle Stone and just some white to lighten it up. And then as we progress, we're going to apply more and more layers that have stronger amounts of white into them. And the way this is going to work, obviously, is we're going to go sort of for the fact that the light is really kind of coming, hitting the tank from above, like it's outside and the sun is shining on it sort of thing. So that means the brightest part of the tank is going to be the top and it's going to sort of progress down from there. So when you're spraying it, you're going to take that sort of uh, first highlight color and apply it sort of all over the top and then sort of a little less and then down the sides but not all the way because of course the darkest part like the undercarriage and the very bottom of the tank you want to leave it darker and not highlight it as much and then when you're continuing on with your second highlight you're just going to apply it again to the top, but then not go da so far down the sides as you did before. And then a third, you can do a third and even a fourth highlight, just adding progressive amounts of white and going just less and less down the sides till by the time you're done, your final really bright white highlight should really be only sprayed on the very top of the tank 
and you shouldn't be putting any really at all down the sides. If you did that well, you should see sort of a subtle gradient getting increasingly darker, especially on the sides of the tank, you're going to notice that. And don't put on a too heavy a coat when you're doing this because also you don't, you want to leave some uh, darker colors in the recesses. So if you put too much paint on, spray too hard, you're going to get too much of your bright yellow down in the crevices. And that's not the idea. This should be a light spray so that you get sort of a gentle highlight effect, not a really heavy one that just covers up all of the darker paint in all parts of the model here. After you finish spraying the yellow, you want to let your model really, really, really dry again. And that's because of the way we're going to be applying the camouflage. We're using blue tack here, which is sort of a um, sticky goop that's used conventionally for hanging things on walls and you can buy it at office supply stores but it's really great for modeling and we're going to be putting a kind of a late war pattern camouflage onto our model which means that the edges are going to be quite sharp not sort of soft or blurred like on some of the earlier or other model videos that we've shown here and one way that you can do that is using blue tack to sort of mask off areas that you you know want to stay a certain color and still keep the lines very hard and sharp so this first layer of blue tack that's being applied is going to mask off areas that we want to stay the base yellow color on our model so you're just going to soften the blue tack and make the lines and areas that you want to remain yellow make sure you you know push it down firmly so that it stays in place and that you're not going to get paint running underneath when you spray once the tank is masked, we're going to be spraying the entire uh, surface with Vallejo Air Surface Primer UK Bronze Green, which is, as you can see, a very dark shade of green, and you, you want to go for pretty good coverage here. Obviously, if you don't get hit everywhere on the undercarriage and everything equally really well, that's fine, but you want to make sure you pretty much cover all of the other areas of the tank with this base layer. And now we're going to use a similar process to what we did when we were applying the yellow. We're taking here Vallejo Air Camo Green and we're going to mix a bit of white into it uh, as our first highlight. And we're just going to spray that on the top and down the sides. And then we're going to make a sort of a slightly lighter mix with more white added into it and then just spray it a little further down the sides and you probably this is going to be a little bit to taste just like it was with the yellow so you can apply as many layers as you want it's kind of a question of how much gradation you want and how bright you want it to get when it's finished on the very top of the model Jasper usually ends up doing two or three layers sometimes four it really depends on what looks good and some colors you may find need to be lightened more than others and also keep in mind as we've talked about when you're painting this scale you often need starker contrast and you need to go brighter and lighter than you would if you were doing a similar process on a 28 millimeter model and by the way this technique with blue tack is just as valid if you want to paint a larger scale tank as well. The third color in our camouflage pattern is sort of that German brown color and we're really just repeating the same process we just did. So we've um, taken and added more blue tack to our models you can see. And now what we're doing is just masking off all the areas on the model that we want to stay green, okay? And so everything that's left is just going to end up brown, which is our final color. This is Vallejo Air Camouflage Medium Brown that we're applying here. And you just want to, like with the other colors when you're doing the base coat, you just want to get good thorough coverage so there's not too much green left showing through because, you know, you, you want it to look very clearly brown. Now, in order to highlight the brown, we're going to be doing a little bit different here. We've got that German Camouflage Medium Brown, but to lighten it, we're going to be mixing in some Vallejo Red Leather. Now, that is not an air color, but you can still use it in the airbrush, but you're going to have to make sure the paint stays nice and thin. So, Jasper is using the Vallejo Air Flow Improver product, which is basically something which helps keep the paint thin. And I should point out that when you're doing this, you probably want to use it really all the time. Even though Vallejo air colors are supposed to just be good to use in your airbrush straight out of the bottle, they're usually still a little bit too thick if you want to avoid clogging. So generally you should always be putting in Flow Improver, especially when you're doing this kind of camouflage work. So we're applying the highlights the same way we did with the yellow and green. So the first layer was the had that red leather mixed in. <clears throat> and then after that Jasper's going to add some more highlights 
by adding a bit of white into that mixture of the red leather and the German camouflage medium brown <clears throat> and sort of just progressively lightening it as he did before. And then by the time that he's gotten up to the sort of final highlight layer with the brown, he's going to be using really just white and red leather. And of course, when you get there, you really will be quite important that you're using the uh, flow improver quite liberally. Now, it's possible you could also find a Vallejo Air color that was similar to red leather, which might work out better, but that was just what we had, and it, you can use non-Vallejo Air colors in the airbrush. You just have to be a little bit more vigilant when you're doing it. And now comes the fun part. We're going to peel off the blue tag. Now, before you do this, make sure you really let the model dry. And this is <clears throat> this step is really why all the, it was also important that all those base layers beforehand dry. Uh, if you do this when the paint's still wet or your base layers aren't sufficiently dry when you do this, it will sometimes peel away some of the paint, and that sucks. You can fix it with just a brush. You can touch up areas where the paint gets pulled off, but it's better if it doesn't happen. And if you're just you know, careful and leave plenty of drying time in between the different steps, you will avoid this happening. So you can see that's really looking quite nice. Now, when you peel the blue tack out, there's going to be little bits that still kind of stick and don't really come up very well. One thing you tip you can do to help get loose pieces, of small loose pieces of blue tack off your tank is sort of make a ball of blue tack and kind of dab at the model and use that blue track to attack uh, to sort of attract the little loose pieces and pull them away sort of gently from your model. And even if you do this well, you, you probably may still have some small chippage areas or places where paint came loose. And if that happens, it's not a big deal. You, you can just touch it up with a brush and you probably won't see it because the areas will be so minimal. And now Jasper is really quickly going to use some of the red leather again to paint the tank's exhaust pipes because they're going to be kind of rusty looking. Uh, here he is going to be using some German gray to base coat the various sort of bits of equipment and tools and stuff on the model. So things like the towing cable and, you know, the shovels and those kind and pliers or cl clippers, whatever, the various parts that are attached to the hull of the tank. And now Jasper is going to very carefully uh, base coat the road wheels on the tank just using some Vallejo black here. This process can be a little bit tedious. It's just as tedious on 28 millimeter actually because you have to carefully paint those tires and try not to get the black paint on any of the other areas that you have already finished. Though it's not strictly necessary, you may also want to use some black on other parts of the model just to accent areas that would be really dark and in shadow, like the sort of separate armor on the turret. You can paint sort of black down in between it and the, and the, and the turret to make it look really dark and like those are separate pieces because on this scale they're often sculpted as whole, but you want to give that illusion that there's space in between them. So you can fill this in with black paint. It, you may or may not like how it looks. And you may also want to fill in sort of the holes in the, at the end of the barrel, for example, using black paint as well, just to emphasize that particular area on the tank. Of course, you can't forget about the, t uh, the tracks here, and so they need to be base coated, and Jasper's using German camouflage black, brown, our old standby color here, to get a nice sort of dark, rusted metal type, dirty base coat for them. So this shouldn't be too difficult uh, to paint. Uh, just, you know, avoid getting that brown in places where you've already applied paint. Now, so that there'll be a little bit of extra emphasis on the tank and that you'll be some, you know, more divisions between the panels and stuff, you're going to want to apply a wash. Now, the undercarriage, the tracks, all that, you can go real heavy on the wash because you want these to be dark and dirty looking. So Jasper's just taking a pure Agrax Earthshade here and he's going to apply it pretty liberally on all the sort of bottom, sort of darker part of the... Uh, tank. You can even you can also be a little bit darker at the bottom of the armor skirts, areas where you think oh, there'd be a lot of mud and grime coming up and hitting on the tank. Now you also want to define the seams and panels and all the little edges and stuff on the tank as a whole a little bit better. Now you don't want these um, these divisions or the color to be quite so strong or heavy as what you applied to the undercarriage. 
So what Jasper has done here is he's painted the whole area where he wants the wash to be lighter with a layer of just water and then he applies the wash once he's done that. And that'll cause the, wa uh, the, the um, wash to flow a lot more and be a lot thinner. It'll run down more into the cracks and you won't get as much sort of pooling on the smooth upper surfaces if you do this. It's just sort of a way to just sort of thin the wash as you work instead of say thinning it with water on your palette and then applying it this this is just basically a way to achieve that same effect now we didn't show it on film but Jasper then applied a very light dry brush using buff paint just to the top surfaces and edges not very much at all towards the bottom of the undercarriage but unfortunately we forgot to film that uh, then he's gonna go in with a very fine brush and he's gonna use uh, some Valera Air gunmetal here very lightly to just kind of pick out some sort of metallic areas like on those tools and on the exhaust pipes again on the um on the machine gun in the hull machine gun and those kinds of areas just accent it very lightly here and there with just a little bit of metal but there's we're not going to do any other chipping really on here like we want a larger scale model because at this scale it looks weird and it'll just make the tank look too beat up relative to how big it is all right, and here is our finished um, Panzer uh, 4J. You can see here, the other one's kind of in the background. We kind of showed it a little bit in this tutorial, but not all that much, just because it was the first try and Osper wasn't quite as happy with how it came out as the second one in terms of colors. You can see this one also has a driver sticking out of the turret. He didn't really explain how to paint him, but um, you know, if people decide that that is super interesting how to paint a 15 millimeter um, tanker uniform, we might do that at some point. But as you can see, a lot of the work in this is really in the airbrushing, but it would be very easy to do a lot of these all at once, just because you could set your airbrush up and really spray all of them. And once you've got that part of it done, you're really like 90% of the way there because the, the washing, and dry brushing that comes after that is really pr pretty simple and minimal and you've just got a few other little areas you have to pick out but other than that no big deal and you've got a lot of good high contrast that you've got you've built up from the dry brush and air brushing and that'll make it look really good at this scale but it is really not all a whole lot of work to achieve so i do hope you enjoyed this tutorial and as always please leave me comments with what you thought uh, what you want to see in the future, uh, you know, like this video, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe to my channel. All those things help out uh, with, you know, my channel and my videos and everything. And um, I think that is all for now. So we'll see you next time.